So in part A of this question, we have to calculate the acrobat's clearance over the first wheel. So let's try to understand what that actually means. Let's consider the acrobat at this point in his trajectory. The clearance above the first wheel would be this distance right here. We're just going to call that C for clearance. But before we can get the clearance, we actually need to figure out what the acrobat's height is from ground level first. So we're going to call that Y, and we need to figure out what that Y value is. And it turns out that this question is a good example of an instance in which we can use this equation. This is in the textbook. This is known as the trajectory equation. The only challenge here is that this equation assumes that the launch takes place at ground level. But if you look at the picture, the acrobat is launched from an initial height of three meters. So we can symbolize that by saying y naught is equal to three meters. So we can use the trajectory equation so long as we add that extra initial height of the acrobat onto the equation. Now, we also need to talk about what some of these values are. For example, x. Well, look where the acrobat is. He's located right here. And you can see that the horizontal distance to that point is that 23 meters right there. So we know that x is equal to 23 meters. Another thing, of course, that we know is the angle at which the acrobat is launched. And so that angle is going to be 53 degrees. So we're just going to call that theta naught is equal to 53 degrees. And then we also need g, but that's easy. That's just a constant. That's 9.8 meters per second squared. And then finally, we need the initial speed with which the acrobat is launched. And that is easy because it's given. It's 26 and a half meters per second. So we're going to go ahead and plug in all the known data. Don't forget that the x also appears right here, and it needs to be squared. And then this term v naught cos theta naught needs to be in parentheses because that whole term also needs to be squared. So now we'll go ahead and plug in all of the known data. So there is our setup, and when we calculate y, we should get approximately 23.3 meters. Now we go back to the diagram to see how this helps us get the clearance. So to see that, we can actually label this y as 23.3 meters. And then by studying the diagram, hopefully we can see that the combined height of 18 meters and the clearance C would have to equal that 23.3 meters. So in other words, the clearance plus the 18 meter tall Ferris wheel equals that height at which the acrobat is located. And then if you subtract both sides of this by 18, you will get about 5.33 meters. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. Let's head over to part B. And in part B, it says, if he reached maximum height over the middle wheel, by how much did he clear it? Well, to see how to solve that, let's go ahead and clean up the picture a little bit. Now, this time the acrobat is located right here. So we actually could end up using the trajectory equation again, so we can find this height y, just like we did before. But notice that in order for us to do that, we need to figure out how far the acrobat has traveled horizontally to that central Ferris wheel right there. So that is going to be important for us. And hopefully we can see from the picture and from the given information that that distance, which we're going to call x, is actually simply equal to the range divided by 2. Now, we're able to use the range equation because the point at which the acrobat was launched, which was a height of 3 meters, is going to be the same height as where the net is located. So notice the net is also located at 3 meters. So as long as the acrobat lands at the same height from which he was launched, which is true in this case, then we can use this range equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the range, and then to get this x value, we're just going to divide the range by 2. Now we can easily calculate the range because we know the initial speed with which the acrobat was launched. That was the 26.5 meters per second. We'll square that. We'll divide that by g. And then we're going to multiply that by the sine of the quantity 2 times the launch angle, which was the 53 degrees. And when you plug that into your calculator, you'll get 34.4 meters. So that is the range of the acrobat, but I hope you'll forgive me here because I actually just punched it into my calculator again and that was wrong. That should be 68.8 meters is the complete range. I was getting ahead of myself because we're going to take that range of 68.8 meters and now go back and divide that by 2 because we wanted x. So we'll take that 68.8 
meters divide that by two, that is the 34.4 meters. So that is half of the range, that is the horizontal distance the acrobat travels to get to the center of his trajectory, which is exactly where that middle Ferris wheel is located. So now we have X, it's 34.4 meters, and of course we have all the other data that we need to plug into the range equation, because we have the initial launch angle and the initial speed, as well as the value of G. So let's take a look at how we would plug into the range equation, or the trajectory equation again. So once again, here is the trajectory equation. Don't forget that we have to add that extra initial height of the acrobat, which was that three meters. And then we have all the known data. We know that the launch angle was the 53 degrees, G is 9.8, and then the initial speed was the 26.5 meters per second. And then again, we have X. In this case, X was the 34.4. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. And when you punch that all into your calculator, you should get a Y value of about 25.9 meters. We return to the figure to understand what to do next. So again, that Y value right here is 26, excuse me, 25.9 meters. It's been a long day. And we're looking for the clearance right here. So we're going to call that C. Same ball game again. We're going to take the 18 meter height of that Ferris wheel. Or is the middle one taller than 18? Let's check that. No, they're all 18 meters. So we'll take the 18 meters and then we're going to add the clearance and set that equal to 25.9 meters. Subtract 18 from both sides and you should get a clearance of about 7.85 or 7.9 meters. That is the correct answer to part B of the question. Now, good news for part C. If we go all the way back and try to see what it wanted, it said at the top of the screen here, it said how far from the cannon should the net's center have been positioned, neglect air drag. So just clean this picture up for a minute. How far from the cannon should the net center have been positioned? So we're basically looking for the distance between the center of the net and the launch point right here. But remember, that was just the range. And we had already calculated the range earlier. We had used the range equation, we have it erased now, but you'll remember that when we use the range equation, we had gotten R to equal approximately 68.8 meters. And so that's it. That's the correct answer to part C. It is simply the range or the distance between the launch point and then where the center of the net was located. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.